I was like, you know what? I was thinking, I gotta go through. Should have come through. <laughs> Should have
period. We can't even change the period. <laughs> Come on. All right, guys. Most of you aren't in yet. While we wait a couple of minutes, plus I got to restart my iPad. Uh, please go to the overview and you'll find that in lesson six, four, there's a handout. Please make it available to either look at or read or whatever you want to do. I'll be doing a few of these problems with you to review the previous uh, lesson. So I'll announce this again. A lot of people are just now coming in. Most of you are getting in now. Please go to the overview and find a handout, a worksheet. I need a minute while I restart my iPad. Froze, believe it or not. I've done that before. Make sure you sign in. If you don't sign in, I won't know you're really here, unless you're very active in the communication. I needed a minute to restart the iPad, so make sure you go find that handout, because I'll be talking about that right away. To review the lesson on graphing basic sine and cosine. So we'll do some talk about that. Okay, oh, I gotta hopefully find a document. 
Well, this was, yeah, this is too big. Okay. Zoe, you just came in. Please go to the overview, as well as the documents that we need. There's an extra worksheet there that you'll have to do for the next couple of days to review. The lesson that was, you had to do it on your own, if you recall. You had to go to uh, the PowerPoint and you had to take notes and you had to provide those copy of your notes to me. So go ahead and find that worksheet because we're going to review just a little bit of what you were supposed to have gained out of, out of that lecture that you did pretty much on your own. There was no video. You were just flying by the, the, the seat of your pants as the story goes. Where's the handout? Should be under 6.4 on your overview. Okay. okay, I've got my document up. And you should be good to go in just a second here. All you do is get logged back into Zoom. Okay, so. Save this and it's a bad time for this to happen because this lesson, I, I, I won't finish it all in this time period. I have to send you a supplement to finish it up. And that happened for the other class too. So you're not alone. I think I talk too much when I, when I start ad-libbing, I, I think I, uh, It's, it's my fault, but it's what it is what it is. Okay. Let me share my screen now. Am I sharing or no? Somebody answer. No. Ah, no. I didn't think it was either. What happened? Went and did it. Maybe I shut, stopped uh, sharing at the same time as I'm starting it. Now am I sharing? Yeah, now you're sharing. Okay. Uh, that's what I wanted there. Okay. This handout you were supposed to see looks like this. Okay. And so all that you would learned. Um, that day was to graph a basic, what happened? Uh, I thought he was in already. Is how to draw a basic sine curve and how to draw, graph a basic uh, cosine curve. Okay, guys. If you guys are going to come in 15 minutes late, you guys may as well wait for the, the video or something because two people waited 15 minutes to come in. And I don't know why. It's not, it's not right. No, I'm sorry. I lied. It's not 15. You started at 1040. Never mind. You were only five minutes. I take it back. Uh, you know, five minutes late is still, you had a 15, a 15 minutes since your last class ended. I don't know. You're home. You're sitting at home. Doesn't take that long to walk back to the computer, I don't think. The sine curve, basically, here's my shortcut method that you're going to see me do on everyone. If you do the, if you do the method that's in the, in the textbook, they do a lot of finding values. It actually gets kind of confusing. Here's my simple method. Draw three horizontal lines. Draw 
to at least two vertical because you can do one full period between those two vertical lines. Now, sine curve, this has an amplitude. We, you learned this in the last lesson. The amplitude is this number up front. It's a one. Then we've learned that the number in front of the X in this one is a one. So I'm gonna call that the letter B. That stands for your frequency. Frequency tells you how many pictures can you draw of this sine curve between zero and two pi. And the reason I'm saying zero is because right now we haven't learned how to shift left or right or up or down. So in your first lesson you had, the middle horizontal line was your X axis. This was your X axis. And your original Y axis was here at the zero. I don't know why I keep saying the same color. It was here. So basically those are my axes. That's without shifting your curve. So sine curve starts, well, here's what I do. I take my period, no matter how big it's going to be, I cut it up into four pieces. Cut that in half, cut this in half, cut this in half. And here's what I'm going to do here. Sine curve starts at the origin, zero, zero. And this is a positive one amplitude. So that means we say the absolute value of the amplitude is a one. That means the highest it can go is a one and the lowest it can go is a negative one. If it's a normal sine curve, no other numbers other than ones in there, then it starts here, and here's my quick method. Goes up, comes down in the middle here, comes down to the bottom, and goes back up. So your typical sine curve, try to be a neat, smooth curve, and that's your sine curve. That's one period from zero to two pi. How do I know this finishes in two pi? Because you take the frequency, the period is this tau symbol, Tau is the Greek symbol. That means period. How long will it take to graph this function? Starting from start to finish. The formula is always two pi because that's how long a normal sine curve takes. Zero to two pi is a two pi distance. Two pi divided by the B. And I already so told you that inside this one was a one. B was a one, so two pi over one is two pi. This equation gives you one full picture in two pi radians, meaning from zero to two pi is one full picture. If I wanted to go do another full picture and do another period, I could go this way and cut this up into four, realizing that it starts at the, I actually messed up on this curve. Anybody see where I messed up? Somebody has to see it. I complete ignorance because I fell on my head. Actually, I did fall on my head one time. So I'm not really lying. I want it erased, not on the eraser. Makes sense. There, okay. Nobody answered. I guess nobody got points extra. It, start, it ended here. It's supposed to end here. Okay. And so do another period. It starts here, goes up to the highest, goes back to the middle, middle, down to the lowest, here. Smooth curve. I could do another period the other way if I wanted to. I could go this way. Again, I would cut it up into four equal, cut it in half, Cut in half, cut in half. Now, since I'm going this way, I could start here and go up, down, and it ends in the same place. Or I could continue the pattern backwards and just go boom, 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 boom. You see that? Now, I really want you to, for sure, for sure, to identify these three numbers. 
because those are my horizontal lines. It's better to put them out here so it stands out, not in the middle of a couple periods. And then on your X axis, I have my start and I have my finish for one of my periods. I really need to find out what these three numbers are. And I'm going to show you how to do it real quick here. It gets harder though. To find the middle between any two numbers, you take the average of these two. So here's the work. You take zero plus two pi and you divide it by two. That gives me a pi. So that's my middle. To get the middle between these two, I take the zero plus the pi and I divide that by two. That's pi over two. That number is a pi over two. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. So I take pi plus two pi, that's adds up to three pi, divide it by two, three pi over two. So you will want to start adding your numbers on your graph. If I wanna continue the second period, it takes two pi to finish up, so two pi, how do I get to the next one? I take two pi, I add another two pi to it. This adds up, ends up at four pi. To get the middle here, two pi plus four pi is six pi divided by two is three pi. To get the middle from here to here, three pi plus four pi is seven pi. Seven pi divided by two is seven pi divided by two. To get this tick mark here, 2 pi plus 3 pi is 5 pi. 5 pi divided by 2 is 5 pi divided by 2. That was the easiest they're ever going to be. They're, they're going to usually be harder than that. I could also keep going. If I, at 0, that distance for the next one has to be a 2 pi distance. So 0 minus 2 pi takes me to a negative 2 pi. Actually, I, went, I ended up, where did I end up at? Oh yeah, that's it. You get the middle here, negative two pi plus zero is a negative two pi divided by two is a negative pi. So that number is a negative pi. You got the point here? That's the basic sign without shifting it left or right or up or down. That's today's lesson. Cosine on the other hand, I'm gonna do two periods, one this way and one this way. So again, this is my X axis. This will be my y axis. And since cosine has a one, has a one, it's just a normal cosine starting at zero, ending in two pi, or starting at negative two pi, ending at zero. I do the same thing, cut it in half. Oh, by the way, how high is it going to go? It's going to go one. So one up, one down. I need that number. That's a zero. So I had to not shift it up or down. So I need that number. I need that number. So I got one, two, three numbers, four numbers, five numbers, six numbers. Let's, let's do the, this one here. Cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half, and realize that it's a normal cosine. Normal cosine starts high, so it starts up here. Comes down, has to go through here, has to hit the bottom, starts back up, goes here, and then it has to go to the very top. So the smooth curve, boom. Now, the title of this paper was graphing sines and cosines. I'm gonna call this sine usoids. They're all sine usoids. Why do I mean a sine usoid? Just for fun, here's my zero to two pi and I'm, Maybe I'll even go to the four pi again because, oh, why did I do 45? Four pi. So what happens is I got this middle number not shifting. So it's, it's a zero here again. That's a one, that's a negative one. Sine starts at zero. Let me, let me do my four. If I don't do the tick marks, I mess it all up. I don't get very good dots. Sine starts at the zero here, zero, zero, goes up to this, this first tick mark, it goes all the way up. The next tick mark, it's in the middle. Then the next tick mark, it's at the bottom. Then it ends here. Nice, beautiful sine curve. Let me do another one. 
do it a little quicker here. Starts at the bottom, goes up one, comes back down in the middle, goes back down and starts at see, so it's continues this beautiful curve. Now, cosine, let me call this sine. Cosine starts at the top, comes down to the middle line at the first tick mark, middle tick mark at the very bottom, next tick mark in the middle line, and it's back up to here. I'll continue those dots. Down, down, back up, back up. And here's the picture. Notice that those two curves look the same, except for one small difference. Here's my cosine. If I take the green curve and I shift it to the right, it'll line up to the blue curve. Or if I take the blue curve and shift it left, it lines up with the green curve. Somebody thumbs up if they see that. The other period, oh, good, I got one thumbs up. But how did I do it in the other class? I was able to, well, I think I did this. Okay, so somebody else thumbs up again. I want to see if the symbol comes up on my computer. Oh, that's still the same thing, though. I had something where I could see. I can only see like six people right now. So I don't always see all of you thumbs up. Uh, how did I do it? I actually had it up where I could see anybody thumbs up. It didn't show me who it was. I see Gabby thumbs up. How did I do it? I just don't know how I did it. I, I literally had a little counter at the bottom. It was actually counting down the number of hands up at the moment. How, how did, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, that, those are called sinusoids because they're both actually the same curve. They're just shifted left and right. All right. So let's move on to what you were supposed to have learned besides that. This first page is nothing but identify the amplitude and periods. The, as you go down, we're identifying the amplitude and periods through the graphs. The next page actually has you graphing them. That's, you did a lot of that. So those first two pages, you should be able to get through, but I wanna review with you a little bit. Sine of 4X, why is this problem different? It's different because the A is still a one. That means your amplitude is the absolute value of one is a one. Doesn't matter if it was negative. It's still be at the same amplitude. It doesn't matter if it goes up or down. It's still the same. Now, the B number, there's a B number here. My B is a four. That's my frequency. That tells me how many pictures I could graph within two pi. A normal, if I was to graph it stretched out to zero to two pi, I could get four pictures in there. Now, this is not going to look very pretty, so just bear with me. If I cut this into my normal tick marks, every tick mark means the picture got done. So, I mean, I'm going to have to draw a whole sine curve there, a whole sine curve here, whole sine curve here. I, I would get four pictures. Now I can zoom in so I can try to do four pictures here. This is just for to show you what it means. If this is my zero and, and here I go, cut this into four pieces, starts here in the middle, goes up to the top, comes down, to the middle, comes down to the bottom, and there, there it is. There's my beautiful sine curve. Again, cut them in half, starts in the middle, goes up to the top, comes down, comes down to the bottom, and goes back up here. Here it goes, continue that picture. There's two full sine curves. One, cut it in half, cut it in half, there you go. Start, start here. Go up to the top here, come down to the middle here. See, I'm lining up my tick marks. Then I come down to the bottom and then I go here. Just that's a normal sine curve. One more, half, half, half. Start here, go up, down to the middle, come down, go up, boom, 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 boom. There you go, look at that. I zoomed in. For the average bear, look at that. 
zero to two pi, there's four pictures in there. Why is there four pictures? Because your frequency is four. Now, the question is, what's my period? My period means how long did it take to go from here to here? What's that distance from here to here? Which is, by the way, the same distance from here to here. This is my period, okay? And so period means how long does it take to finish up one picture? Period tau is equal to two pi, because I have two pi is my normal, how many can I get in there? Four. That's pi over two. That means from zero, zero plus two, plus pi over two is pi over two. Pi over two, if you do your scratch work there, plus another pi over two takes me to two pi over two, which is pi, which makes sense. It's the middle between zero and two pi. What's in the middle between uh, two pi and pi? Well, you add those up and divide by two. Or you could just take the answer pi and add another pi over two. That takes me, uh, that's a little harder to do, put a one there. Two times pi is two pi, one times pi is pi, over their product, three pi over two. I almost had that answer in my head a minute ago. Three pi over two. And that's two pi, which is the same thing as four pi over two, if you want to be totally honest. Four pi over two is two pi. So that's what's happening here. All right, let's move on. What if it's a cosine graph? I want five pictures in, in the middle of zero and two pi. I'm not going to graph it, guys. Because it's right now, I'd have to draw a nice grid and be very neat. I'm just going to answer these questions. My amplitude is the absolute value of five, which is five. Right or wrong? Wrong. Wrong. Thank you. I'm wrong. Glad one person was awake. This is my amplitude right here. There's my amplitude. That's my B. That tells me there's five pictures embedded in to zero to two pi. So my amplitude is absolute value one, which is one. My period, my tau, is two pi divided by five. That, that's not very big, guys. Think about what 360 divided by five is. That's 72 degrees. This finishes in 72 degrees. Look how many 72 degrees there are between zero and two pi. There's five of them. So in the other picture, I had four. This had four pictures. What would happen if I created five pictures? Wouldn't those graphs even be skinnier? Yes. Yes. And in real life, what does it mean to have a higher frequency? What's a real life example that involves frequency? Faster. Uh, say it again. Faster. Faster. Is that what you said? Yes. Faster what? Um, I don't know. Circles. How about how about sound waves? Sound is a wave. Sound is nothing more than waves coming at you. What if a train is coming and you hear it off in a distance? Those sound waves are really spread out. I can hardly hear it because the, the waves are coming at you, but it's so far away. By the time it gets to you, it's already dissipated some of the wave. But as the train's getting closer, you got more waves. The pitch gets higher. It feels louder. You almost feel it on your skin. Now when the train is really close to you, there's a lot more waves and it's getting louder and louder. Pretty soon it is so loud that it's just almost busting your ear. But as the train leaves, guess what happens? It starts away from you. So it starts slowing down and you almost can't even hardly hear it anymore. 
when the frequency goes up, the pitch goes up. It seems louder. The, the, the bass can get pitchier. As it slows down, the bass gets lower and it's farther off. It doesn't hurt your ears. Okay. Good my physics lesson for the day. Round of applause. Thank you. This is a normal sine curve. A is one. B is one. Amplitude is one. Period is two pi because two pi divided by one. We drop down to number six. This is going to probably need a reteaching of something. I have a negative angle here, a negative angle. So let me talk about that negative angle for a minute. If I want to look at y equals the sine of a negative 30 degrees on a unit circle, well, let me first do positive 30 first. That means the angle goes up this way and there's 30 degrees here, it opened up. If I draw my triangle, then opposite 30 is a one, the hypotenuse is always a two, and the, the other leg has to be the square root of three. The sine of 30 degrees in quadrant one here is opposite over the hypotenuse or opposite over the radius, however you want to do it, will be a one over two. If I talk about y equals sine of a negative 30 degrees, then the picture changes slightly. I'm opening down, so the angle's going that way. And that's a negative 30 degrees. But if I drop my perpendicular, it's still a right triangle. Opposite the 30 is still a one. Hypotenuse is still a two, and the other leg is square root of three. But pay attention, this is going down, so it's a negative. This stays positive, didn't change. Hypotenuse never changes. So sine of a negative 30 degrees is still opposite over the radius or the hypotenuse. In this case, it's a negative one over two. So the only difference when you put a negative there is that the answer becomes negative. So you have permission to say sine of a negative 30 degrees is identical to the negative of the sine of 30 degrees. Because of the same answer, except for the answer is negative. This makes that problem so much easier. Let me also show you something else with the sine curve. Back to my picture. Back to my quick idea of how do I graph the sine curve. If I start at zero, and here's my middle, also at zero. Watch this. If I graph my sine curve this way, picture is going to have four tick marks. One, three in the middle there. So starts here in the middle, goes up, comes down, goes down. So I keep doing the same thing, guys. Don't make it hard. Just, just cut it up. That goes to two pi. Let me do the negative angles. If I do the negative angles, cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half. Now I got my starting in the middle, goes up, comes down, goes down. Fit, same picture. Okay, so if I do 30 degrees, the answer is here. 30 degrees is roughly, uh, let's see, this is pi, that's 180. This is not, 30 is gonna be in here. Here's 30 degrees, roughly, right here. See the Y value? The Y value is positive something, positive. If I do negative 30 degrees, that's about here. Negative 30 degrees, check it out, check it out. What's the Y value here? negative. You see why? That the sine of 30 is the opposite of the sine of negative 30. It's symmetrical, but one is up here and one is down here. You see why this definition is true? Go back to that problem. What I personally would do is rewrite the problem as a negative 2 sine of 4x. Now that negative two does cause a problem because now the sine curve flips upside down. If you remember, if you graph y equals square root of x, that looks like this. If you graph 
y equals the opposite of the square root of x, that looks like that. It flips it over the x-axis. That's what multiplying a function by a negative does. It flips it. It's reflected over the x-axis. So I know that's going to cause a problem when I graph it, but let me just do the amplitude. I'm not using this one now, I'm using this one. Absolute value of a negative two is still a two. It's the same amplitude, period. Two pi divided by the B, which is four, is pi over two. So much nicer than thinking of negative numbers in there. And what does that mean about that? I'm gonna do that graph real fast here. It's a, Ne it's a negative two sine of four X. Y equals negative two sine of four X. If I was just doing a simple graph, here's my middle. It did not shift up or down, so it still starts at zero. This time the amplitude is two. Remember, absolute value of a negative two is two. Zero plus two is two. Zero minus two is still a negative two. Cut this into four pieces like I always do. Boom, boom. Sine starts in the middle. But this time, instead of going up, it goes down because it has to flip. It had to flip. The original sign does this. That's the original sign of 4x. This one flips upside down. Now, because there's a 4 in front, I had to do that period, which we said was 2 pi to pi over uh, 2, meaning from here to where it starts, since there's no other number being added inside this function, it starts at 0 and it ends at pi over 2. Because it ends at pi over two, how do I get these three tick marks? What are they? Well, to get the middle, it's very simple. To get the middle, you add the two ends, zero plus pi over two is pi over two, but then what you have to do is divide by two to get the average of those two numbers. When you take a fraction divide by two, the denominator just doubles. So this is pi over four. Let me get these two middle numbers. How do I get between the zero and the pi over four? You take the zero and you add it to the pi over four and you take that answer, divide by two. That adds up to pi over four divided by two really is pi over eight. This is pi over eight. To get this tick mark here, you take the two endpoints. That's pi over four plus pi over two, take that answer, divide it by two. How do I do this one? Very carefully, I take the two, I multiply it by pi, that's two pi, that's a plus sign. I take the four, I multiply it by pi, that's four pi. I take the two times four, that's an eight, divide it by two. Oh, wait a minute, then that's not really eight, it's a 16. So if you keep that in mind, that when you take that eight divided by two, it's a 16, that gives me six pi over 16 reduces to three pi over eight. So three pi over eight is that last one. Check this out though. Zero, add pi over eight. Add another pi over eight, pi over eight plus pi over eight is two pi over eight, reduces to pi over four. So if you think about it, it was zero, one pi over eight, then two pi over eight, then three pi over eight, then four pi over eight. This distance is always the same, pi over eight, another pi over eight, another pi over eight, another pi over eight. And four pi over eight is the same thing as pi over two, which is what I had written here, see? There's a lot of ways to look at that, okay?
Let's do a couple more. Let's do the sine curve. Does that change? It's the same idea. Oh, it, it's got a, we've done sine curve. What did, I, what, what did I just do? Oh, I did uh, this one here. I did the negative four. How about the cosine with the negative number? Back to my cheat sheet. Y equals cosine of 30 degrees versus Y equals to cosine of a negative 30 degrees. What does a negative do on cosine? Unit circle. Cosine is positive 30. That goes up this way, 30 degrees. Drop a, high, uh, a leg, right angle. That's still a one, that's still a two, that's still a square root of three. Cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent over a hypotenuse. Adjacent is that leg. There's the hypotenuse. Square root of three over two. If I do the cosine of a negative 30 degrees, that means the angle goes this way. And that's still going to be a 30 degree angle, but it's negative. Still a one, still a two. Still a square root of three, it's still there, and it's positive, it's still positive, but this one becomes negative. So that's equal to the adjacent over our hypotenuse. Now the adjacent is, that's weird. The adjacent is still square root of three over two. What did you notice? They're both positive. They are. So you can literally say the cosine of a negative 30 is the same as the cosine of 30. I can prove it to you with a graph. Let's do a cosine graph. Okay, cut it off here, cut it off here, it goes. I'll start here. Cosine starts on top. Let me do my four tick. If I don't do my four tick marks, I'll mess up. Starts at the top, goes down, goes down, goes back up, goes back up, looks like this. That's zero and that's two pi. If I go this way and I cut it up into the four tick marks again, it goes, starts at the top, comes down, comes down, goes up, up here it goes. Okay, so what happens? 30 degrees is about here. There's the Y value. Negative 30 is about here, y value. Notice the y value is the same. They are the same answer. So enough of that nonsense. Amplitude, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite this problem as equals to three cosine of two x. Don't worry about the negative. So look at that. Amplitude is three. Period is two pi over two which is pi. So if I was to graph this picture, if I, I can graph it here real quick here, and I do two periods, look what happens. I'm starting at zero because I'm not adding anything inside the parentheses. So that finishes in two pi here. Look what happens here. In, in zero to two pi, it finishes in pi. That means it actually finishes in the middle, pi. So in pi, it's a cosine. So it starts here. I got to do my tick marks. If I don't do my tick marks, I always get it wrong. Start here, come down, come down, go up, go up. There it is. Kind of weird. I don't have enough room. But then I have another one here. Another one there. See, two of them. Two of them in, in the pi distance. I'm sorry, it was two of them in two pi distance. I'm sorry, it's two pi distance. One was done in pi, another pi. I have two of them in two pi distance. Two of them, what that means. All right, enough of those for right now. You guys can play with the others, look at the graphs. Let me move on to the actual lesson for today. We are doing translations. That means we are moving left, and right, I should say the word or, can't do both. And moving up or down. Same rules apply. That's the horizontal, that's the left and right. This is your vertical, that's your up and down. 
This gets very complicated how he worded it. Let's just see what we're doing here. F of function, x minus d. That's the same thing as saying y equals the square root of x minus one. A function f of x is square root of x. f of x minus one means there's an x minus one in the square root. What does this square root do? Remember? The square root of x, this one was simply this picture here. What happened when I went minus one inside the function? Does it go up, down, left, or right? Right. It does the opposite of what you think. It's either left or right, and it does the opposite, so it's going to the right. So I have to shift one over. The picture looks like this. Same thing for the sine curve. If you are going D minus D, if that's a minus one, then it's going to shift to a, a one. That's where the sine curve is going to start graphing, not at zero. It's going to start at one if I put a one there. Okay, so how is this going to work here? Here's your first problem. And I, I realized what he wanted. He only wants one period. So if I start here, and I'm going to ask myself, my, my frequency or my amplitude is still a one. My period, my tau, is two pi divided by, what number is front of the x? Anybody, anybody, what number is there? A one. A one. So it's going to finish still in two pi. So I'll just cut it off right here. And the question is, does it start at zero? Or does it start at, it shifts to the right, pi over three. It doesn't start at zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the zero there. I don't really need it there. This doesn't help me. It's actually starting at a positive pi over three. Zero is over here. If you really want to be honest, zero is over here. You can graph it any way you want. I just choose to take a, a vertical and a vertical, say it starts here. Then I have to go and say, well, how high will it go and how low will it go? So I look at my amplitude. This thing does not shift up or down because there's no plus or minus a number being added to this function. So it's Zero, add one, one, take away one, negative one. So technically my x-axis is still here, but my y-axis is back here, but who cares? All I care about is where does it start and where is it gonna finish? Now, we said that it finishes in two pi. I wrote somewhere there, didn't I write it? No, I didn't, I don't know if I did write it. Yeah, I did right here. 2 pi. So how do I get where it ends? So on your paper, you need to have a spot where you're doing all your scratch work, okay? And to find the end, where it ends, I'm going to take the two, I'm going to add the two endpoints. I can't. That's silly. I don't have to. I misquote. That's finding something else. I want to add, I want to add my period to the beginning. So pi over three added to how long will it take to finish? Two pi. And how do I do that math? I put a one under here. They're not the same denominator. So one times pi is pi. Three times two pi is six pi. So I'm adding six pi divided by the product of the two denominators, three. That turns into seven pi over three. This one starts at pi over three and ends in seven pi over three. 
Then I realized that it's a sine curve. And if I cut this up into my four tick marks, it's gonna start here. It's gonna go up to here. It's gonna to go to here, it's gonna come down to here. And I've done this already for you like seven times. So it goes up, come down. There's one period. You only wanted one period. Starts at pi over three, ends at seven pi over three. Now you're asking, how do I get these other three numbers? I'm pretty happy that you give me those two. I'll even be happier if you give me the middle. Okay. So for this problem, we're just going to get the middle. One middle, not, not all of those. How do I get the middle? To get the middle, you add the two endpoints, and then I divide it by two. That's an average. So here it goes, pi over three plus seven pi over three, take that divided by two. Good news, common denominator. That's eight pi over, I wanna say three, but because I'm dividing the whole thing by two, that three really becomes a what? A six, it doubles. Now, if you wanna, if you wanna leave it as uh, divided by three, divided by two over one, you're welcome to do that. That means eight pi over three times the reciprocal. Now you see why I just doubled it? Eight pi over six, the same answer. That reduces to four pi over three. So there's my middle, four pi over three. So I'm gonna call it a good problem right now. I have the lowest it'll go, I have the middle, I have the upper, I have both endpoints, and I have the middle of it. That's pretty good. That's worth, out of 10 points, that's worth eight points. You did a good job if those all the numbers you gave, okay? I like this question here. How does the graph of this problem differ from the graph of this problem? Notice the differences. One's in parentheses. Say it again. One's in parentheses. That one's in parentheses, meaning that this function has to move pi over three to the right because there's a minus there. This one, the function ends here and there's nothing being added to the X. This is on the outside of the function. This means this function is moving down pi over three because you're taking the sine curve, taking a value away means you're shifting it down. That's what happens. You'll see that coming up here. Let's do another problem. I don't like the lettering he uses because I like to do this. I like to call this my A. The number in front of the X is my B, so I got a B. But then I like to call the number in here, I like to call it C, but he calls it D, and I don't know why. But anyway, let's talk about the period, the, the amplitude. The amplitude will be the absolute value of three is three. My B is a one. My period would be two pi divided by B, which is two pi. Then I have this plus pi over four. And it's inside the parentheses and there's a one here. So as long as there's a one out front that I can just say, what does this function do? It moves to the, the what? Left. Left, pi over four because there's a plus pi over four means left pi over four. So he wants one period again. So let's see, did it, it shifted. So let me cut it off here. And I'm gonna use this as my starting. And then I'm gonna draw my horizontal and my horizontal. Does this shift up or down? 
Did you hear me say anything about shifting up or down? No. And I'm going to put a zero here. And the amplitude was a three. So zero plus three is three. Zero minus three is a negative three. So here are three important horizontals you need to have. And then my starting place, let's see. It doesn't start at zero. It has the zero would have been here but I'm, at, I'm shifting it to the left pi over four. So it's not really a zero. It's zero minus pi over four, negative pi over four is where it starts. And where does it end? It ends, it ends, remember the secret? You take where it starts, negative pi over four, and you add the period. How long will it take to finish? two pi. So I got to take the negative pi over four and add it to two pi over one. Very simple. One times negative pi is negative pi. Four times two pi is eight pi. Four times one is four. Negative eight pi plus eight pi is seven pi over four. That number is seven pi over four. All right, the middle. Since I got to do all my numbers, let's just do all the numbers right now. Let's do the middle right now. How do I get the middle? To get the middle, you take the two endpoints. One was a negative pi over four. The other is a seven pi over four, and I'm dividing it by two. That's how you get a midpoint. This is how I got the end point. Okay, last period, I was really dumb. I didn't notice that the denominators were the same. So it caused me to do extra work. Since I see the denominators are the same, negative one plus seven is a simply six pi over four, but I'm dividing it by two. So it really becomes a six pi over eight. Reduce that three pi over four. So that's the midpoint, three pi over four. Let's go ahead and do this middle right here. Let's do this one. How do I do the midpoint? I take the two ends, add them together, and divide by two. So that's a negative pi over four plus three pi over four. Divide that by two. That turns into a hey, same denominator. Negative one plus three is two pi, not over four, but over eight. You see what I did? It would have been a four, or if you wanted to do it harder, you could have multiplied it out to get the 16 or something, but that reduces to a pi over four. That number becomes a pi over four. To get the last middle number, I take my input. See, you need, a, you need scratch paper somewhere or a clean sheet where you're keeping track. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do it over here. That number was three pi over four. I'm gonna add it to the seven pi over four. Take that answer, divide by two, same denominator. Seven plus three is 10, that's 10 pi over four, divided by two, 10 pi over eight, which is five pi over four, five pi over four. Now, let's look at the picture. I know it's a cosine, so cosine has to start up. Then on this x value, it's touching the, the middle. Then this x value, it's down here. Then this x value, it's going to be coming back up. And on this x value, it's up here. So it's a curve. And I'm not very good, but close enough. That's one period. That's a pretty good period, I would say. Let's do another one here. Now he wants two periods, okay? This time, there's one thing, there's a catch. Yes, my B is three, it is true, but I can't leave it there, guys. You cannot leave the period, the, not the period, the frequency, you can't leave it in the parentheses. So I have to factor it out. So I'm gonna rewrite this problem as Y equals negative two, cosine 
pull out the three. When you pull out the three, three X divided by three is X plus pi divided by three is pi over three. You have to rewrite it. Now, if you wanna put another parenthesis in, feel free. It's okay, the book does that. All right, that's what we got. We got our amplitude is the absolute value of a negative two, which is two. Since it's negative, you know it's gonna be an upside down cosine. So keep that in mind. Uh, my B is a three. Therefore, my period is two pi divided by three. That means I get three pictures in two pi distance. I'm dividing it all up into uh, 360 divided by three is actually 120 degrees. So every 120 degrees is a new picture. What else do I need to know? It shifts, shifts, uh, look at this one right here, shifts left or right. The plus sign here shifts left pi over three. That means it's negative pi over three because normally it starts at zero, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna call this negative pi over three starting out, okay? And I'm gonna make my horizontal lines. And since it's a negative two, and it did not shift up or down, there's no plus, there's no plus or minus a number here. So I'm gonna call that zero. And then my amplitude is a two. I have it written right there. Zero plus two is two. Zero minus two is a negative two. And he wants two periods. It looks to me like he's actually wanting a period to the left and a period to the right. It doesn't really matter. You want to go with two periods this way, do it. But if you go, if you don't, you want to do, the book may go one period to the right and one period to the left. That's fine too. It's still two periods, okay? There's a reason why one might be better than the other, but it's not important enough to, to bore you. All right, it's a cosine. So I'm gonna have four tick marks. One, boom, boom. One, boom, boom. And it's gonna look like this. I'm just gonna draw the picture first. Then I'll worry about my numbers. Upside down cosine means it doesn't start on top. It starts at the bottom goes up to the next tick mark, going up, goes up all the way, comes down, boom. Keep going, up, up, down, down. So the curve basically is looking like, that's pretty good. And I'm not even an artist, look at that. Up, I'll finish this up in a separate video so you can finish it up to do a couple of my math lab problems. Other than that, take it easy. Bye, sir. Have a nice day. Bye, sir. You too. Joseph, bye. Bye, Aaron. Was it Aaron who talked? Yeah, I think it was Aaron. So there, Zachy. You come in late, leave early. I guess. Hope you signed in in attendance. I may not remember that you're here. All right, I guess I'm signing off then. Bye, Zaggy. Wake up. Wake up and go to lunch. <laughs>